to Pandemic Cooking. My name is Adele. I am coming to you from Lillian Osborne High School in Edmonton, Alberta. And me and Ms. Nostrovich are here. She is behind the camera today. And we are talking about what we should make today. And we decided that we were going to make pierogies. I have gotten this video request from a few people. I'm grappling with it though, because this is, this is a recipe that I took over 20 years to learn. Um, I'm not joking, and when I teach it, when I have pierogi night, I find it really important to teach the history, which I'm not going to be teaching with you today. I'm also not going to be giving you the exact recipe in the comments. You're going to have to listen and follow along, okay? So I've got my mise en place going here. In this pot, I have five recipe potatoes diced, um, peeled and diced, and they're going to be, I'm going to boil them until they're really, really soft. Um, so that's probably going to take about 15, 20 minutes. It's important that I get this going first because I'm going to need the water, okay? I have one pound of medium cheddar cheese grated. Um, cottage cheese pierogies are a different, a whole different ball game, so we're gonna do the, this, which is easier today. I also have about a third of a cup of salted butter melting in my pan. That is just a small fraction of the butter that we're going to be using today, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to put your judgment aside. Thank you so much. Okay, I've got a medium onion here that I'm going to give a quick fine dice to. And I am going to be sauteing this onion in my butter, okay? Okay, we want this to be a pretty fine chop. Like, I don't wanna say a mince because it's not gonna be a mince, but you want it to be super fine, almost like you're putting it into a meatball because when we serve these pierogies, we don't want them to be onion pierogies, we want them to be cheddar pierogies, right? But I do find that the onion, as Ms. N loves a chopped sauteing onion. Listen, this is different, this is Ukrainian food. How does Ukrainian food start? Onion. Get some butter and onion and then figure out what you're gonna cook. Honey, dice the onion. I'm gonna reference my grandma a lot while, I'm, while I am teaching this because this is who I learned this from. And I always make fun of her. Grandma's still, grandma is still alive. I have to tell you though, the pandemic has been difficult because I can't go see her. She's in a, uh, in a facility, so like a home. So I can't go see her, which has actually been really crappy. Um, okay, so, but I'm gonna reference her a lot. So honey, more butter, more butter, okay? So when I was learning this, I was like, grandma, when I teach people how to make pierogies, I'll say, honey, melt a pound of butter. And then she said, honey, I bought two pounds. So I have <laughs> reduced the amount of butter that I have used over the years because I've changed a couple things that grandma does. So <clears throat> I want this to get to a boil and then I'm gonna take some of the water. So while this is sauteing, I'm gonna start on my dough, but this needs to be a little bit um, hotter. So I have four cups of flour in here, just all purpose flour and one teaspoon of salt. And I have made the dough in the mixer before in the, in the uh, KitchenAid, but I have found that it's just better if I do it by hand. So I've got my two cup measurement here. I need two of them and I'll show you in a second. And I am going to put in um, about two thirds of a cup of oil. Originally grandma had about three quarters. I just found it a bit too oily. So I've just reduced it a little bit to two thirds. So this is uh, vegetable oil. And when I talk about the history of pierogies, I have to reference like what is grown on the prairies, wheat, <clears throat> root vegetables like onion, um, canola. So these are some things that were, were present in Eastern uh, Europe. And then when people came over, they became part of the Eastern European and Canadian diet at that time. Um, and then I asked my grandma, you know, did you butcher meat? And she said, no, we had a couple dairy cows. So that's what they had access to. They had access to flour, cheese, a bit of oil, because oil and wheat grow really rapidly on the prairies. They grow really well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to come back to you when these are a little bit more sauteed and I've got more boil on my potatoes. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back. So my onions are sauteed. They're just on a low heat like a one or a two and I want a really nice golden color my potatoes are starting to come to a boil they've come to a boil so what I'm gonna do this is when you have to like do a little bit of like cautious work slash praying okay so when I cook the potatoes I overfill with water because this is what I'm going to do I'm going to dip my liquid measuring cup into the potato water so what I've got here is a nice starchy water and I am going to fill up my liquid measuring cup with the oil in it till it is at two cups. So I've got my two cups there. I'm going to put the lid back onto my potatoes. 
so they can keep cooking. I really want to borderline overcook them. Okay, this color of my onions, I'm happy with that. I'm going to turn this off and just take it off the heat there. Okay? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my hot potato water and oil to my flour. Now, this is where grandma, like, again, we need to be brave. We're going to get in there. We're going to get in there. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I'm just going to use the end of this knife here just to get it started. Grandma does it with her finger. Sometimes I do, um, but I'm just not feeling it right at this second. Grandmas are feel fearless. Grandma, like old Ukrainian grandma, like girlfriend, nothing, nothing hurts her. Nothing hurts her. Okay, now that it's kind of incorporated, I can get in there with my hand. So making a pierogi dough, there are lots of different ways to do it. I know a lot of people actually put mashed potatoes in their dough. Um, how you do it is fine. There is no um, right or wrong way to do it. I know that different um, countries like Poland, Germany, Ukraine, Russia, they kind of all have their ways, their ways to do it. And then within that, different families have different ways of doing it. It's like, it's like making, um, it's like an East Indian family making a butter chicken. It depends on the family, depends on where they're from. It depends on so many different things as, of what is going to give you this, give you your family's recipe. So this one is mine. All right. So I'm just going to put my bowl to the side. I'm going to bring it onto the counter. And now I'm going to knead it. So it's kind of like making a bread dough where we are developing the gluten so we don't have a rough looking dough. Welcome back. So I've added my onions with the butter to the cheese. I have my dough kneaded here. I'm just letting it rest for a few minutes and while I make my filling. And I have my potatoes boiled, okay? I can tell because they're not sticking to a fork and the water's looking really starchy. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this over to the sink. I'm gonna drain the potatoes. I'm gonna take, give these a good shake. Take them, I'm gonna add them right into my cheese. So I want to add the hot potatoes to the cheese so it melts it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Mixi Mattel. If you do not have one, then you may certainly use a potato masher, but this is one of the tricks that I've, that grandma taught me and it works like a hot dam. So I'm going to just start on slow, get those potatoes mashed up, get the cheese melting, I am going to season it with salt and pepper so it tastes how I like it. So now I have it basically incorporated. Now what I'm going to be doing is just mixing it so these hunks of potato get blended. Okay? Okay, welcome back. Um, so I couldn't, I, this is like my first time I couldn't get the potato chunks out of the mixture. There's a couple reasons for that. I could have cooked them a few, a few minutes longer. Um, I could also, the potatoes were pretty big, so I maybe, is maybe a little bit potato heavy. However, it tastes good. I added more butter. I got like the hand mixer out. I did everything I could and I'm just accepting this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. Do you see how like the dough has relaxed a little bit? I'm going to cut a piece of dough off of my, this is in the bowl there, off of my dough. I'm going to put the bowl back over top. And now what I'm going to do, it's kind of like when we made the dumplings. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut little pieces of dough. Now, in my opinion, a pierogi should be relatively small, but the lazier I get, the bigger they get, so I don't have to make as many. Okay. So, I don't know, I, I just cut seven little pieces of dough there. Oh my goodness. I'm going to pop that back underneath. And now what I'm going to do, I don't need any flour. The dough is a nice texture so it's not sticking to anything. I am going to roll my little patties out and what I find, do you see how the center got thin there? You have to be careful with the pressure of your rolling pin. So the dough is super soft so you don't want to make it too thin. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demo a few of them and then I'm going to pinch them and I'll be back in two hours basically is what's going to happen. Yeah. And then Mr. Dawson and Ms. Hendry are gonna make their videos. Okay, so I roll them all. Okay, 
Now I'm going to take your text, your filling should have a texture of its own that you can be able to hold. If you're making cottage cheese pierogies, you won't have that, that same situation or like um, a fruit pierogi. So I'm going to put a little ball of filling in the middle of them. Depends on how big my patty is. I have um, tried to roll out and cut and I find that the dough just uh, is too elastic and you have to like roll them back out anyway. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my pierogi, I'm going to push the filling down and I'm going to stretch the dough over the top and pinch it. Now I'm going to get to the side, I'm going to push the filling down and stretch the dough over and pinch it. There's a couple important things here. You don't want to get any filling in the, in the seam, otherwise your pierogi is at risk of opening up. Um, <clears throat> and you want to pinch so that you don't have anything left like that. Okay, you want to make sure that that's all gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this 500 times and once it's, my little pierogies are done, I'm going to put them on a piece, on a baking sheet with parchment. I'm going to line them up. We are going to cook some today and we are going to freeze some. So the first pan, I'm just going to pop it in the freezer and flash freeze them. And then I like taking them home like that. So then you can take out however many pierogies you want and cook them at one, cook however many you need at one time. This is new from grandma. Grandma always cooked all of them and then she would freeze them after. But I also have to remember that girlfriend didn't have a deep freeze in 1940s. So, you know, like um, they, did, they did what they could and they also made these huge amounts that I'm, now I'm just accustomed to. So what I do is what I've learned with my freezer at school and my deep freeze at home, I freeze them like that on the sheet once they're frozen, I pop them into a plastic bag and then I can take out however many I want, okay? So I'll see you in a little bit. Um, this is gonna take, if I were doing this by myself, it would take probably one hour. Um, hopefully I can recruit some help today. Um, <laughs> they're all looking at me like, nope, we're out of here. Um, but then once that's done, I will show you how to cook them and how we serve them. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. Okay, so this is our second batch of pierogies. I've got the water still on high. If it's, getting, if it's getting close to the top, then just turn it down to like a medium high. But what we're looking for, like grandma said, till they float and a minute more. If they're frozen, obviously they're gonna need more time than if they're fresh. But like I said, you wanna look for that like puffy, like the dough puffs back. I know it took me about 10 years to get grandma to put that into words. Okay. So I'm gonna just spoon them into my, <clears throat> into my colander over the bowl. If you're only doing one batch, then you can just put this right over the sink, but, and like you can dump it out, but if you wanna save the water for your next batch. This is why you have to be careful with the spoon. See, they're shockingly delicate. They're made with love, okay? Yeah. Huh? Okay, yeah. that's my last pierogi floating in there. I'm gonna get them out. Really great pinching, ladies. We didn't have any of them open up. Woo. Woo, woo. I'm gonna turn my butter off. Okay, <laughs> give it a quick tap. All that water came off. Now I've thrown them in my butter that's already on here. Oh, so what'd you do, Catherine? Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Pour it on, live your best. Now, Ms. N and I just got into a very serious fight about- I feel like our is forever right changed. Now. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't feel safe. <laughs> Just don't say that. <laughs> so there, like I was talking about, different families have different traditions. We always ate ours uh, plain. Like we just did them boiled and then in butter and then you eat with them with sour cream or whatever. If you do want to zhuzh it up a little bit, you could melt a little bit butter or bacon or uh, onions or whatever and fry them. I find for me the texture of the dough, like I really like that soft texture. I'll be honest with you though, Ms. N, if I'm eating them leftover, mm -hmm. I would consider frying mm -hmm. them. I'd mm -hmm. also consider mm -hmm. frying a chimo. But for the homemade, this is how good. Then what you can do, sorry, then you flip them. Grandma takes her, her aging hands and flips them and like gets the butter everywhere. Oh God, it's so good. And like my grandma is 93. How? How? I don't know. They're on to something. Okay. So this is my pierogi recipe. I'm so sorry, I will not be sharing the uh, recipe with you only because it took me 30 years to learn. Um, but if you listen to the video, took some notes, you should probably be able to do it. <clears throat> Make sure you like 
and smash that subscribe button and check out the rest of our videos. Put some comments down below, share our videos, make us YouTube famous. Otherwise, keep cooking in that pandemic. Bye.